I get a lot of requests um, to do collection videos and show basically more than one animal in a video and I have quite a few individuals at this point, I think 24 total in my collection, including everybody, the snakes, the tortoises, you know, uh, Cleo and all the geckos. But So I thought I would do a video on the majority of my gecko collection. I have 15 cresteds at this point and two gargoyles, so 17 geckos total, and I keep the majority of them in bins. I do have a couple exoterras that I have set up and a 10 gallon and a 5 gallon here and there, but um, bins are so convenient and light and um, cheap. They're affordable, especially if you have a, light collection, or a large collection, so I, I thought I would do a video on how I keep all of mine so you guys can kind of get, get the gist of that. And then just as an update, I did get a new reptile. Last week, um, I got another baby crested, I know, another one. Um, she was a birthday present, and I went to one of my favorite reptile stores down in the southern part of the state, because we were visiting family, and uh, the owner pulled me aside and said he had a really good-looking crested, so I took a look and fell in love, and I brought her home. So I'll do a little clip on her, and then I'll show you the inside of a couple of the other enclosures. So I moved them all into this nice, brightly lit room. This isn't where they usually are. They're not stacked like this, you know, everybody has their own place, but I moved them all in here because the lighting is so nice I could do a video because it's it's nighttime right now, it's like 9.30, so let's get to it. Okay, so I'll start the walkthrough. These purple containers have my older hatchlings in them. Um, they're all around four and five months old right now. Uh, it's one hatchling per bin because these babies are big enough to eat live food. And once um, a gecko is of age, or a crested or a gargoyle is of age to eat live food, they will often nip the tails and the toes off their cage mates by accident. Um, this bin has a lone male. You can see him right there. He's the yellow guy on the branch. Um, I think this bin is the equivalent of a 10 gallon that has Santiago in it. Um, this big purple bin right here, I don't know if you guys will recognize it or not. And in the, the bottom right corner, you can see a tail. This has cowboy in it my uh, gargoyle gecko, my male gargoyle. This bin on top right here with the nice pretty flowers has my new addition. Um, her name is Catnip, and um, I'll do a little clip on her in a minute. Um, this top container right here has three brand new babies in it. Uh, you can see one right here, another right here, and a third in the back. These all hatched out within a week of each other, so they are the same size, and um, they're too small to eat live food right now, so I'm not worried about them nipping tails. This little bin right here has two babies in it. Um, these guys are clutch mates, so they were from the same pair of eggs. You can see somebody up there in the back, and then I know the other baby's right there in the corner. This middle bin right here has uh, my gargoyle gecko bebop in it. She's an orange blotch gargoyle. Um, she's in the same size bin as this yellow male crested because um, she's still growing and I want her to have enough room to grow. As you can see her dish is licked clean so she does, um, she is a good eater. And then this green bin down here has a particularly flighty male in it. He's not real fond of um, contact or being handled. So I have him in a bin that's tinted, so he doesn't see as much stuff going on in the outside world. But um, this is a six and a half quart shoebox. It's the perfect size for a gecko under five grams. This is a 16 quart, I believe. So that comes out to, I think, around seven, five to seven gallons. So that's the perfect size for a gecko that's um, but under 10 grams, I would say. And then uh, Bebop, who's in this tank, she weighs 16 grams. These babies weigh about two a piece. The babies in here are about one gram each. Um, the new girl that I've got, Catnip, weighs eight grams. You can see her. She's right there on the ground, but I'll take her out and show you. She's just a stunner. She's so, her colors are just beautiful. But um, yeah, so bins are very convenient and they are very light. Um, you can stack them. These three do stay stacked during the day. Um, they all have holes in the tops of the containers um, and, and in the sides. I'll quick pop the top off this. It's a very basic setup for a hatchling. Um, no, there's somebody moving. You see the little head? Right there? 
This camera doesn't do too great on close-up. This is Wicked. He was my first ever hatchling peak. Um, pretty basic setup. Plant, something to climb on. It's usually a branch or a vine. Food dish, water dish. As you can see, the babies make a mess. They walk through their food. There's lots of poop. I'm actually going to clean out these bins um, after I'm done making the video. So everybody's going to get their paper towel changed and whatnot. But this is for one hatchling. And uh, it's much cheaper to house them like this than in Critter Keepers. Um, I think these purple bins cost me maybe $1.50 each. And these bins are like 90 cents with the lid versus a critter keeper of that side which size which runs around five or six bucks. And that's for the smallest ones. I'll pop the lid off these little babies too. These are my youngest. So as you can see they're very tiny. I still have two of them that aren't named. This top one is Nateri. Um, this bottom one is a nice red. You can see the camera picking that up. Then this little guy over here is a really pretty Harley with some partial pinning. But again, another basic setup, some plants. Um, I have a rock. They love to sleep on top of stuff and wedge themselves in the corner. Um, shallow food dish, shallow water dish. You guys can see these dishes are really shallow, so nobody drowns or gets stuck in it. And yep, just plants. And then a paper towel substrate. So that's for a baby. I'll quick do a clip of um, some of the older geckos set up. Okay, this is Bebop's tank, my orange reticulated gargoyle gecko. She is 16 or 17 grams at this point, and um, I keep the older babies on moist eco-earth. As you can see down there, she's got a nice vine to, to um, climb on. And then her plant is actually a potted plant that I got from like Pier 1, I think. She really likes to curl up in the base of it, so I recommend getting the fake potted plants when you come across them. They really do like to use the base. Uh, she also has um, this piece of egg crating here because they she can't stick to the glass like a crested can. So um, that's just a basic um, setup for her. She's got a water dish and a food dish and she's a little piglet. I just filled this last night and it's already cleaned out so she is hungry and ready for more. She's a little flightier than, um, say, a crested of her size. She's not real fond of being handled. Come here, Bebop. Come on. But if I'm patient with her, she's just... And here's Cowboy's Tank. Um, this is Bebop's future mate. He's my black and white reticulated gargoyle, and he's about halfway fired up right now. Um, I've got some nice branches for him to climb on. A um, piece of egg crating. Um, a plant that I made with a rock base, so this is real sturdy. He loves to sit on these rocks underneath the leaves. Uh, food, water dish, you can see he ate most of his food too, so nice basic setup. I went to go get some more plants. I want to put some more plants in this corner, but um, the pet store was all sold out of the size I needed, so I didn't get any. And uh, there's Cowboy. He's grown a lot too. Come here, buddy. Pretty mellow dude. Oh, cowboy. I've noticed that the gargoyles tend to jump whether or not they're going to find a perch to sit on. Give me a buddy. There you go. Cowboy. He's a nut. And last but not least, this little catnip. Um, she's a beautiful blonde Harley. Those are my toes, girly. As you can see, she's a little... She's a small gecko. But this, uh... The dark brown on her fires up, or the gray fires up a nice dark brown, and her dorsal stays nice and creamy. She's absolutely beautiful fired up. Come on baby, jump. Here we go. She's just a cutie. Beautiful Harley patterning. She looks just like Vampire Bill in miniature. And she's actually got a couple of Dalmatian spots too. She's a very pretty girl. She's named after a character in a book, so if anybody can guess it, it's actually the character's nickname, it's not their real name, so if you know it, brownie points for you. And there's a little catnip.